What up? I'm back, we're back, everybody's back. Uh, to get right to it, today we're doing a oil turbo feed restrictor with a nitrous jet. I'm gonna show you how to do it because I cannot find a single video that shows me how to do it. So we're gonna figure it out together and hopefully this helps you guys with any questions you might have. Check it out. If you're watching this video based on the title, there's no reason for me to explain to you why we're using an oil restrictor. But for those of you that are just great fans and awesome supporters, let me do this for all six of you real quick. This is the top of the turbo or the turbo uh, oil feed inlet, okay? And the oil line that feeds it comes from the bottom of the oil filter housing on this engine specifically. Every engine can be a little different, but that's how I'm doing it here. Now this engine sees like 75 to 85 PSI on a cold start, and 80 PSI is the max amount of oil pressure that this turbo can see across the range. So it's too much and I have to slow it down. That's the reason we're doing this. Now the reason I'm using a nitrous jet is because I don't wanna buy 10 or five or even two $15 oil restrictors to figure out the proper one for my setup. So what I did was I made a small gauge that goes on the line pre-turbo right here, or I can put it down here at the bottom of the engine. Either way is doable. And we can read the pressure across the board, whether it's cold start, whether it's already hot, it doesn't matter. We can see what it is and then we can restrict it accordingly. I made this cute little gauge here, and what this does is it goes right in line. Now this is cheap, I didn't wanna deal with it, but I ended up just biting the bullet and making one. It's a $15 gauge from AutoZone. Hopefully it's accurate, I'm just gonna go with, uh, with that concept. And I made a little aluminum bracket, and I've got this T right here. Now if you're smarter than me, you'll just buy a gauge that has an eighth inch NPT thread on the back, and you won't have to do all this with this line and this bracket. But to explain what this is, this is a 1 8 NPT T right here. So this is this port, this port, and this port are all 1 8 inch NPT thread. This is a 1 8 NPT 2-4 AN adapter, uh, male to male, and the same thing goes for this side. It's just a different brand, which is why it looks a little bit different in diameter. And then we have a female to female-4 AN coupler. And what that allows me to do is thread this on to the output fitting coming out of the block and then put the feed line here or same goes for the top of the turbo. Now the pressure should be very close, but we do have about two feet of oil lines, so we could see a variance in pressure, a, a couple PSI probably due to the, uh, the volume of the hose. Now, ideally what I'd like to do is put this on top of the turbo here. Of course, I'll put the fitting back in. I'll thread this on, I'll thread the feed line into it, and then we can record how much pressure the turbo is seeing. And I've already done that, and it was seeing about 85 PSI at 1200 RPM of a cold start, which as I said before, is too much. So we're gonna restrict it and I'll show you how. So here is a nitrous jet. Now I have modified this jet slightly. I bought this one, it's uh, like eight bucks for the jet and I bought it small, it was like 32 thousandths. And then what you do is you just drill it out to where you need it. So I drilled this one out with a 1 16th drill bit I think, which is like right at 64 thousandths of an inch. And I did that based on the uh, fact that most guys with the same engine and turbo setup or engine setup mostly, are uh, restricting their turbos between 60 and 80 thousandths. That should get it down to a desirable pressure. Thankfully those people put that information out there so I don't have to spend too much time. But I still wanna know what the pressure is so I can uh, you know, keep my turbo alive as long as possible. So I drilled this one out and the idea is that it fits down inside this fitting. Now this fitting is a dash four on the top side here to a like whatever the whole set is. I think it's an M10 or M12. 125, 1.5, somewhere in there. Yours is gonna be different, most likely. Anyway, see how tall it is? That's the problem, we can't really use that because when you go to put the feed line on, it, uh, it runs out of thread. We get like one turn of engagement and that's just never gonna fly. So what people recommend doing is cutting the fitting right here above the threads but below the flare, and then this nitrous jet will act as the new sealing surface for the AN line. Now, I'm gonna do this at the one coming out of the block because I don't have any extra and whatever this is, to dash four, but I have a couple of eighth inch NPT to dash fours, and that's what's coming out of the, uh, the oil filter housing on the engine. So I'm gonna do this on that one, I'm just explaining it here. I'm gonna go take it out of the block, you don't wanna cut it on the engine because you could get shavings in there. And um, then we're gonna put this jet in the top, and then we're gonna put it all back together. And by doing this on the engine block side, it allows me to put this gauge back on the top of the turbo, and we can see how much that restriction changes our oil flow or our oil pressure and that way we know where we're at. And that way if the turbo fails in a few months, for some reason we don't know, we can rule out pressure, assuming this, you know all this stuff is right. We're just trying to eliminate problems before they ever arise. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, just kind of get down there and uh, yeah, there she, there she is. That fitting right there. See that white, uh, what's that shit called? The white, the white tape, the Teflon tape? That's coming out, that's the feed. So I'm gonna pull that out and uh, we're gonna cut that one down and we're gonna take the risk and we're gonna see if it works. So we got the fitting out of the oil filter housing. Now there's a couple things I want to note here, or mention rather. Um, this, first of all, the thread tape. 
you can see it's still on here, but I wrapped this entire thing. So when you thread these into the block, they work or anything rather, not just the block, but then when you take them out, the thread tape comes off. And so before I put a new one back in, I will take that tape off and retape it. But I'm also gonna take this pictel here very lightly. I'm going to pull out any of the old tape because if this tape doesn't um, get noticed or you leave it in there, when I put the new setup in, it's only gonna push the remaining shards of tape up into the engine, and then that stuff could end up clogging the line in the future, and I would have no idea why I have reduced pressure. Or, you know, a turbo failure. So, um, it's interesting though, when you take this jet, now again, I'm going off just what I read online. I've never seen a video about how to do this. If it's out there, I'm sorry that I, I missed your video. This sets in here like perfectly, right? So, the idea is we only gotta cut the thing down. Well, I don't want to modify that one. So this one, I try to do the same thing and it won't go in. And also these two fittings have different height flares. The flare is the same angle, allegedly, because they don't leak. I've had this installed and running obviously, but they look a bit different. And the good part of that is that this jet seems to match that flare quite a bit more. It's hard to get this thing to focus, but see, you can see it there. So that 37 degrees that we're talking about, that looks pretty solid. But because this won't fit down in there, I'm gonna have to drill this out, and I'm also gonna have to cut the top of it off. So I'm gonna do those two things real quick, and then we're gonna revisit this and see what it looks like. Okay, here is the finished version. I cut this thing down, cut the flare off the top, added some thread tape to it, and I drilled out the center, and then I cleaned off those edges. So you wanna make sure that if you do drill this out, a drill press would be great. I literally just freehanded it, and you can tell. Um, but the fitting looks pretty straight and you know, we'll see what happens. But anyway, I, uh, here's my jet. Again, this is at a 65 thou um, hole right now and I've got the next size drill bit ready in case I need to go bigger. This is drilled out to fit it and like I said, it's shorter because you can see where the flare was cut off. It used to be to about there and it's cut down. So then when you slide this inside it, I uh, got lucky and found a bit that was just the right tolerance so it actually fits almost tight. Um, that's the way it looks and I did thread the line on there and it actually seems to seal up pretty good We won't know until we tighten it down I'm gonna go pull the thread tape out of the oil filter housing like I talked about before I'm gonna thread this one in get it nice and tight hook the feed line up And then we will put this on top of the turbo. We'll fire it up and we'll see what kind of pressure we have Okay, new fitting started in it's tight because the fitting points straight down if you have a similar setup It is gonna be a bit frustrating to put your nitrous jet in because it's gonna want to like drop out of the bottom. So I'm gonna move this oil pan before I get any farther once the drain line is back on there so I'm not dripping on the floor. And then I'm gonna set the jet up in there and run the fitting right below it behind it so I can't drop it. And if I do drop it, it won't fall on oil. So I move that kind of shit before you move forward. Okay, so we're all buttoned back up, at least for now. The restrictor in that uh, the bottom section where I said I wanted to put it was definitely tough, but it is up in there, it's nice and tight. And then up here on top, we've got our gauge. So let's fire it up and see what kind of pressures we have. All right, so we're fired up now and uh, cold starts about Fully warmed up, 750-ish, 800 RPM. I'm looking at about five to eight PSI. We're shooting for 10, so I gotta take it back apart and you know drill it and put it back in and see where I'm at. But I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get my desired pressures, and then we can call it a day. I hope this video helped you guys, and now when someone suggests to use a nitrous jet as an oil restrictor, it should make a little bit more sense. Thank you guys very much for watching. Peace out.